Good evening and welcome to First Baptist Church Holcomb's Sunday night service for Sunday, July the 11th, 2021. A few announcements for tonight's service. Uh, VBS Anchored starts tomorrow night. It will be Monday and Tuesday night with Parent Night on Wednesday. Uh, 5.30 to 7.30 for the children ages 3 through 6 grade. And Wednesday night's parent night is at 6 o'clock. So I want to see you all here. Bring your kids and come and join the fun with VBS Anchored. Tonight after our service, we will have our business meeting. Don't forget about our weekly needs for our offering. And if you are joining us through the live stream and you want to make a donation, P.O. Box 205 here in Holka, or bring it by the church office. We got our sample ballots for our deacon election this morning. We will have deacon election next Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning, the committee on committees will meet right after the church service, the morning church service. If you are on the committee on committees, you should hear more about this from during the week this week. Our men's Bible study begins again on July the 20th. Men will meet on July the 20th at 6 o'clock yeah. in the evening. And our revival will be July 25th through 28th. July 25th through 28th. At this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just ask you to be with us tonight as we study your word. Lord, ask, we ask that you just help us to gain knowledge from Nehemiah and what he went through, Lord, and help us to be inspired and challenged by his life and his legacy. In Jesus' name, amen. Our call to worship tonight is Blessed Be the Name. We're going to sing the first verse. <laughs>
Tonight, turn in your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 4 as we're looking at faith that overcomes obstacles. Nehemiah chapter 4, faith that overcomes obstacles. as you get into Nehemiah chapter 4 and chapter 5 and even uh, part of chapter 6 you see some of the obstacles that they face some of the uh, struggles that the nation uh, is dealing with as they're trying to rebuild the walls around the city and Nehemiah had a great task before him the people had a great uh, work to be done and now they are going to begin to face some obstacles. They are going to begin to face some struggles. And what we're going to see as Christians tonight is we also, uh, whenever we are doing a work for the Lord, we'll face struggles. We will face obstacles. But yet God is with us. He remains faithful in uh, watching over us, taking care of us, protecting us, and giving us the strength to persevere. And so that is what we begin to see here as we look tonight. Uh, beginning uh, in verses 1 through 3 at some of the obstacles that they begin to face, some of the struggles that they begin to deal with. The Bible says, But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight. We thank you once again for your presence here. And Lord, we pray that you would give us instruction and counsel through your word once again, that you would show us how you were sovereign in this situation or how you were watching over these people. You were taking care of them and you were providing for them. And Lord, how you still are doing that for us today. Lord, help us to be revived. Help us to be refreshed. Help us to be renewed and understand what our responsibilities are and use the gift or gifts that you have given us to honor and glorify your name and to continue to evangelize the world. And Lord, we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first thing that we begin to see is ridicule. The first obstacle that they face, the first uh, struggle that they encounter is ridicule from the pagans who were already there, who had seen 
uh, the temple be rebuilt. They had seen the sacrificial system uh, restarted and some of those things take place. And now they have noticed that the walls have been torn down for a while. They've been in rubble for quite some time. And yet now here comes Nehemiah. He begins to assess the situation. He begins to look at how things are. He motivates the people. He gives the people his vision, the burden that had been placed upon him by God, and they begin to rebuild. They said in chapter 3, let's do it. Let's rebuild the walls. Let's not make any more excuses. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get busy. Let's rebuild the walls. And now they begin to hear the people talking. They begin to hear the murmuring. What are they doing? How are they going to rebuild the walls? Do they understand what kind of sacrifice it's going to take? Do they understand how much effort they are going to have to put forth? They, do they realize how many hours they're going to have to put in? And that's what we have to understand in order for us as a church, as order, in order for us as individuals, in order for us as families to experience revival, a refreshing, a renewal, we have to put forth the effort. We have to spend time in prayer. We have to spend time in discipleship. We have to spend time putting forth an effort to see a rebuilding take place in our life, a rebuilding take place in our community, a rebuilding take place in our church. And that's what the enemy was trying to do. They were hoping that ridicule would stop the process, that ridicule would hinder the process. And it's what the enemy tries to do to us many times. He tries to use the ridicule of others. He tries to use the scorn of others to stop the progress, to cause us to uh, sit down, to cause us to rethink and to reformulate plans that God has already given us clear direction on. And so he, these men are standing there. Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Can they revive the stones? These stones hadn't merely just been broken apart and could some way be pieced back together. They had been destroyed by fire and would be very brittle and useless. But God had provided all the materials they needed to rebuild the walls where they would be useful once again where they would be uh, able to protect them once again, where they would be able to fortify the city once again. And so that is kind of what we begin to see here. They even said, look, if they rebuild, especially if they use any of the old walls, all they're going to do is just crumble and fall back apart. Even if a fox crawled up on it, it would just simply fall back down. And then that's whenever Nehemiah steps in after he hears the scorn and in verses 4 and 5, he gives some supplication. He gives some prayer here to the situation. He said, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. This is the purest way of expressing a, 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 a trust in God, a fear in his uh, commands that had been given to the nation of Israel, and they were totally relying on God as a nation. And Nehemiah was totally surrendered to the plan that had been laid out before him. And so he begins to intercede on behalf of the people because of the scorn and the criticism. That's what we have to understand. The people were being attacked here. Uh, they were facing ridicule here. And the tactic that was being used here was trying to cause the people to become discouraged. Anytime there is an attack of discouragement, there will be a trace of truth. But it will neglect the great truth. And the great truth here was that God was with the nation and had promised to see them through. And this project was going to be successful if the people remained vigilant and stayed the course. Tobiah was guilty here of criticizing God's work. He wasn't criticizing merely the Jews or merely Nehemiah, but he was criticizing God's work. And so what we begin to see here is that Nehemiah understood that we work, pray, read, and hear the word differently when we're under discouragement rather than reading it under the idea of faith and from the mindset of faith. 
And here's something else we need to think about with Tobiah and his friends that would begin to criticize this project. People can only criticize you when you are doing something. They were facing criticism because they were finally doing something. Because they were finally being obedient. Because they were finally doing what they should have done years ago whenever they began to return to the city. And by the way, while we're talking about and looking at this idea of being criticized for doing something, there are some good things to be criticized for. It is okay and it is a good thing to be criticized as men for spending time with their families, making sure that their families are provided for physically and spiritually and that they are invested in making sure that they are teaching the Word of God, that they are being the priest of the household that they have been called to be. It is good for women to be criticized about taking their role in the home seriously and desiring to be a part of that home uh, life that is talked about in Scripture and working with their husbands, being that help me that they have been placed there to be. It is good for us to be criticized for things like that, for taking a stand for what we believe in and why we believe it. And so we must understand that while they were facing criticism, they were facing criticism because they had finally started doing something and doing what the Lord had called them to do. And so Nehemiah voices this prayer because Nehemiah had a work to do and he would not be distracted from it and he didn't want the people to be distracted from it. And so rather than him spending time trying to uh, talk back to Tobiah and trying to answer back to the critics, he turned it over to God and he said, God, you handle this. They're criticizing your work. They're criticizing what you have already instructed us to do. And so, Lord, we know that you're watching over us, providing for us, taking care of us. And so, Lord, we know you are big enough to handle these people. And, Lord, we pray that you would handle it in a way that honors you. And so what happens in verse 6 is they face this ridicule. They've seen the pagan scorn and heard it. They've heard Nehemiah's prayer, and now we see the people straining. Look at verse 6. Nehemiah said, we stopped and formed a committee and decided what we needed to do to uh, take care of the criticism. That's not what he says there, is it? It says, we built the wall. They kept on building the wall. They understood the importance of it. They understood the direction that they'd been given. And so they built the wall and not just part of the wall. It says there, and all the wall was joined together under the half thereof. Why is that? For the people had a mind to work. We must trust that with God's help we can do anything and we must have this same mindset that the people had that they were going to continue to build the wall regardless of what ridicule they might face, regardless of what scorn they might hear, regardless of what obstacles may be placed in their, in their way. At this point, they had a mind to work. And it is the same mindset we need to see in our churches today is that people have a mind to work. They use the gift or gifts that they have been given to honor God, to glorify His name, to serve one another, to disciple one another, and to evangelize the community. Nehemiah's prayer asked God to take care of his enemies, and notice what happened. Not only did God take care of the enemies, but God answered by taking care of His people, and He strengthened them, and they had a mind to work. They didn't quit. They didn't go back home and pout, and they didn't go back home and moan and complain, but they kept on working. Then not only are they going to face ridicule, but then a conspiracy. And so we have a faith that overcomes obstacles, and the first obstacle is ridicule. The second is conspiracy. There was a plot laid out in verses 7 and 8. He said, but it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, built back up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. 
They thought early on in this process that by simply criticizing the people and ridiculing the people and questioning Nehemiah and his leadership and his direction that the work would cease, that the work would stop because the idea was that Tobiah thought while he was governor already in some of the region around the city, he would eventually be able to take over the city and have more power and have more people under his control. And so he is upset because there his power is being threatened because they are building the walls up and he sees that they're being built up and he understands what he's seeing that the people are working together they understand that they are a team and that this process is going by a lot quicker than he thought it was going to he's seeing walls be rebuilt and gates being put back up and so he conspires in verse 8, and it says in verse 8, he conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. And so all these people begin to plot together. The prayer that was voiced in verses 4 and 5 was a preamble to action seen in verse 6, and the people were going to fight now. The enemy was going to fight back. They were trying to come up with a plot. They were trying to come up with a plan to hinder the work. That's what we have to understand is that God did his perfect work both in building the walls and strengthening and building up his people. And so each day we are going to face the enemy. Each day we are going to face ridicule. Each day we are going to deal with conspiracies and plots and all these different things against us. It's why we are told in Scripture to put on the whole armor of God and to stand against the craftiness of Satan and the wiles of the devil, as the King James puts it. And we have to understand that we can continue to work. We must have a mind to work. That's why in verse 9 they begin to pray again. And many times in the book of Nehemiah, there's prayer that's followed up by action. He said, nevertheless, in verse 9, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Now, you'll notice what it says there. It didn't say that they prayed and somebody said, well, we prayed about it and God's going to handle it so we don't have to watch. That's not what it says there. While you pray, you ought to be watching while you're working. You have to watch out. You have to watch out for others, and it's good that you have others watching out for you, and we protect one another, and we take care of one another, and we pray for one another, and we build one another up. That's what was going to have to take place for this project to be successful, is not only were they praying, but they were working while they were praying, and they were watching and working while they were praying. There was much activity that was going on. They were trusting the Lord. They were reminding the Lord of the promises that he had made unto them. And they were watching and working while they were doing that. And so we understand the importance that is seen here. We see the importance of working. We see the importance of praying. We see the importance of watching all coming into play in these first nine verses. And then... The next thing that you'll notice is a, an obstacle or a struggle that they would face would be that discouragement would begin to set in. Discouragement would begin to set in because in verse 10, Judah said the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed because it was a hard task. That's what we have to understand. Living for the Lord is hard. Serving the Lord is hard. But it is a rewarding work. It is a, a work that we are called to. We are called to serve one another. We are called to disciple one another. We're called to minister unto one another. We are called to use our gift or gifts to honor and glorify God, to evangelize the world, to spread the light in the darkness, to be that light uh, that is needed in a dark world. And whenever we find ourselves in these areas where we are working, where we know we're doing what the Lord has called us to do, and we're facing ridicule, and we're facing conspiracy, it can lead to discouragement if we don't keep our eyes focused where they need to be and keep moving forward. That's why it was important for Paul, whenever he was talking about putting on the whole armor of God, to talk about that piece of armor, the shield, because those Roman soldiers could lock those shields together, and they could move forward in the battle, and they could 
protect everyone in that line from those fiery darts that were coming because those shields were locked together and they were holding on and they were moving forward. And so that's what we begin to understand here is we placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as individuals who make up the church. We've got to lock shields together. We've got to stand on the faith that is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ and keep moving forward because there are those who need to hear the gospel. There are those who need to see that Jesus is alive and he is still working in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. And we must not allow discouragement to cause us to stop working, to stop praying, and to stop watching. They were beginning to become discouraged because they were moving around the wall. And as they were moving around the wall, there was more rubbish. There was more rubble. There was more decay from those previous walls that had been broken down and burned. And they were about to have to move all of that out of the way so that they could continue to build. It was going to cause them to be more vulnerable to the enemy. And it was going to cause them some time. It was going to cost them some effort. They had to move that before they could continue to build the wall. And so we must be careful as we're working, as we're serving, that we don't allow ourselves to become discouraged and to stop. And the enemy it was going to use this mindset that was trying to set in to try to intimidate them and cause them to stop. And uh, y'all not listening fast enough tonight, so I'm going to have to finish this up uh, next Sunday morning. But let me just uh, put a bow on where we're at right now. We have to understand that the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. There's much rubbish. They were not able to build the wall. Discouragement was beginning to set in. Nehemiah had a major task ahead of him, but God was with him through it all. He was going to use Nehemiah. He was going to use these people that were willing to stand, that were willing to take uh, this time and to put forth this effort to show Tobiah and the other enemies there that God was in control, that God was still on the throne, and that he was protecting these people and he was going to work in the nation of Israel. And so it is our responsibility as a church to continue to show the world that God is on the throne, that he is in control, and that he is still working, ruling, and reigning in our lives. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you now. We thank you once again for a, another opportunity to be in your house and to hear your word. Lord, we're thankful.